I thought I'd tackle this from a broad perspective of how would you control different kinds of materials and different kinds of parts. So, just to try to get a little interactivity, uh, I started with a quiz. Anybody want to answer the quiz? Our people have a tendency to drift towards saying decouple three is the best process, and it depends. We find out. We also tend to say always use a post gate sensor. We did for many years. There's a reason for that due to older machines with slow transfer and so on, but it's not always true. It depends. Um, anybody getting a message here eventually? Some other people say always switch over or transfer when the cavity is exactly volumetrically full. And, and that depends too. And also people say my machine doesn't accept external transfer so I can't do robust decoupled molding. And that's false. It depends on what's going on. So the best transfer for switch, best strategy for V to P switchover is depending on Material behavior, one of the biggest things, that includes what kind of material it is, how it behaves, if it's hard to flow, if it's thermally conductive, not conductive, has filler content. It depends, secondly, on wall thickness and flow length, which is your pressure loss. So high pressure losses create high pressure gradients. Also, they freeze off quickly in thin wall parts. Thick wall parts, you have plenty of time to take control and do what you need to do. Temperatures and transfer, heat transfer rates also affect the way the part is finished. So all of these pieces go together in choosing a control strategy, and these are the given parameters that you have to work with to make a decision. Uh, in past studies, when people have argued for one strategy or another, they've typically used a test bar, which is a fairly thick part, not very long, and really easy to mold and then they put polypropylene or polystyrene in it and say the answer is here's the right way to control to control um, V to P transfer and not only that they generally measure variation over a period of time with the same material in a short 300 shot run or however many shots they do what we find in the real molding world is that material changes, as John just talked about in his previous talk, dramatically. 10% uh, viscosity changes, 20% viscosity changes, filler content changes, all the things that make material your, one of your biggest variables um, cause us, oh, let me go back, seems to me means that we shouldn't run the same material for a control strategy study. We should be changing the material to see how the process control strategy reacts to it. So to find the best control strategy, I figure that the right way to do that is to cover a broader spectrum than just tensile bars. And we did, in this case, thin and thick wall parts. How does amorphous versus semi-crystalline change? And I picked a couple different types, one that's shear sensitive, polycarbonate, so on you'll see in a minute. So what is best for the different kinds of molding and how well does the control strategy control what? Your part. Well, we made an awful lot of parts in this study and we already know that certain measurements inside the cavity correlate to the part. Cycle integrals correlate to dimensions. Fill and pack time correlate to dimensions in thin wall parts. Um, and peaks correlate to flash and short. So we already know those facts from previous work. Rather than measure all the parts, we decided to take the study and correlate to in-cavity variables, peaks, integrals, and fill and pack time as our responses to this, these different process strategies. So here's the experiment. We're going to take a thin part and a thick part Oh, there's a paper on this you can get that's got details that I won't probably cover here, um, of the shape of the part and where the sensors were and all that. So we had a, a three-quarter millimeter part, which is uh, 30 thousandths wall thickness, and a four millimeter, same part. It's about that long and has a couple islands in it, and it um, has an insert so we can make it really thin or thick. And then we picked four different materials to run in each of those conditions. Um, a nylon, a glass filled PBT, polyester, polycarbonate, acrylic, two amorphous and two crystalline materials. 
And for each of those, we set up these different control strategies. And we'll talk about the different strategies in a minute. And then we set a stable process. We change to a different material. And then we evaluate how did the strategies reduce the relative change of your various part parameters, your in-cavity measurements, relative to how much viscosity change we threw at the, at the, uh, at the process. So I coded all these, uh, these uh, control strategies this way. Decoupled one is an old term which simply means a slow, sp a fill speed that won't overpack the part, transferring to hold when the cavity's full. Um, sudden rise at the end of cavity pressure sensor. Um, these four decoupled two, we fill the part to a, a partially filled, 95% full, and transfer using one of these techniques, the postgate sensor, a temperature sensor at the end of the cavity, a temperature sensor in the middle of the cavity, and we had a uh, just volume, which is essentially machine transfer on position. And then decoupled three, we use two speeds, one to fill and one to pack. And you can talk to the folks on around here on decoupled three, but we find in many molds that packing with speed instead of with pressure is more reliable, more robust, and less change with changes in viscosity. So we can transfer the machine after pack using pressures, temperature at the end or mid cavity, and we can transfer on volume or position. And then Arberg helped us out a little bit hooking up their pr pressure regulation mechanism, which is supposed to follow a template, keep a pressure transfer curve running consistently all the way through. 